Hello again, everybody. Scott Casper, Takedown Wrestling. We continue our coverage of the sport. Special guest of the Nike Hot Seat today. It was announced recently in Indianapolis that Marion University would add wrestling. Yeah, the Knights are going to field a wrestling team. Here to join us is a former three-time Indiana State wrestling champ himself, the new head coach of the Knights, Stephen Bradley. Stephen, how are you? Good, good. How are you? Good. I'm gonna. I may not be the first, but surely the first time on this program. I will say, Coach, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's talk a bit about Marion University. Um, you first heard of them wanting a coach and adding a wrestling program when? Um, it was a couple of years ago that it actually had came across the news feed on IndianaMat.com. Um, and so at that time, I was coaching at Lincoln College and uh, contacted the guy that had put the post out and uh, just started kind of looking for information. And uh, and so it was kind of a long, long process, obviously, that, that it's come to this point. So, Well, January 7th is a day you'll mark down on your calendar, as all of us will. That's the day that the director of athletics, Steve Downing, officially announced you as the new head coach or the first head coach of this program. Um, he says he's excited to have you join the staff. How excited are you to take on this responsibility? Um, I'm really excited. Um, I think it's a great opportunity um, for myself and my family, um, a great opportunity for the university to add wrestling, um, as well as a great opportunity for Indiana wrestling as a whole to have a another school for, you know, high school kids to, to look for, you know, going to school and wrestling. And um, I just think it'll be a tremendous thing just all around. Undertaking this kind of a job, Coach, is, is a big deal. Uh, it really starts for you right now. And the idea of building a program, everything from uniforms to, to facilities to uh, individuals to your team, the makeup of the team, what your team looks like today and what it will look like in five to 10 years. It's all about structure and planning, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, a lot of work to do. So yeah. talk, to we, us, uh, talk to us about the first steps. Do you sit down with, uh, uh, athletic director Downing and, and, uh, and structure this whole thing out? Um, yeah, we've been working together right now. We're still working on, uh, kind of where we're going to be wrestling or practicing at. Um, obviously the athletic facilities here, um, with the athletics themselves growing the way they are and the school growing the way they are. Um, we, we need to do some renovating of the, of the facilities. Um, so, you know, obviously looking to get kids on campus, um, let them see what we can do for them academically and help them out in their lives and, and figuring out what they want to do with their careers um, to, you know, um, you know, got to do the scheduling, the budgeting. It's all, it's all just kind of one thing at a time and um, keep progressing forward to, to get where we want to be. The NAI is where you're going to live. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And the NAI is continued to grow wrestling. Um, it's one of my favorite uh, divisions in all of college wrestling is the NAIA. And it's because they, they really leave it up to the athletic directors and the coaches. Uh, it's, it's great competition, not as many uh, structured caps, uh, total number of team members, that type of thing. I mean, it's, it's not the wild, wild west, but boy, are you guys having fun. Can you talk about the NEI as a conference? Um, no, it seems to be good. They have, uh, they definitely have some rules with, uh, academics as far as, you know, the better your students do, um, in the classroom, um, it, it helps the program as far as number of scholarships that are counted against you. So it gives you that ability to, uh, to really push the academics and, and, um, trying to make sure kids are doing the right things and going to class. And, um, it gives your, your program better opportunity to have more kids, be involved in the varsity lineup um, if you have, you know, guys doing well in the classroom. So um, to me, that was really kind of cool when I found that out. Um, I thought that that was a really good step for really pushing the academics um, for the the incoming athletes that we'll be getting. Now, the NEI is very strong with academics, and I know that Marion University is as well. And it's uh, guys like President Elsner and, and uh, A.D. Downing that – 
uh, hired you with that idea in mind, sure, it's okay to put, I mean, they're going to encourage you to have winning teams, championship level teams. But if you're not champions in the classroom either, it's kind of pointless, isn't it? Yes, you're absolutely correct. Um, there's obviously that's why they're coming to college is to get an education. And if they're not going to go to class and not going to work hard in the classroom, then it actually will be all for none. Um, so that's hugely important. Um, hopefully we're, we're going to be able to bring in good student athletes, kids that want to make sure they're going to class um, and are preparing themselves and setting themselves up to have successful careers in lives and uh, be great leaders in the world. Stephen Bradley joins us. He sits on the Nike hot seat today, and he's the new head coach for the Marion University Knights in Indianapolis. You've got a, a tremendous uh, amount of experience for a guy your age, 33 All-Americans uh, that you've helped to guide, 73 national qualifiers, and three national champs. Coach, that's, uh, that's quite a record for 10 years. Well, thank you. Uh, let's talk about your first head coaching job. You spent three years at Lincoln College in Illinois. And then uh, from 2012 to 2014, you earned back-to-back -back regional coach of the year accolades after guiding your team to a pair of team regional championships in 2013 and 14. Who served as your inspiration? Um, I mean, Coach Clem over at Lincoln College, um, the great mentor. Um, I could not have asked to have been with another man um, as far as, you know, teaching the right things, preaching the right things to the, to the athletes and, uh, you know, just a great guy to, to have in your corner to constantly be there to help you out. Um, you know, if I can be half the man that he is when I'm ready re to retire, I will have done a great some great things in my career. So um, that's all I can hope for at this point. Tremendous tribute to uh, somebody that I guess it would be easy enough to to model your life after somebody like that. The challenge is living up to it. Uh, Goodness sakes. You know, I, I, I looked for a guy like you when I was at uh, the University of Iowa. I wanted a guy uh, to be not just my head coach, but to be uh, somebody that was involved in, in the fitness aspect of my life. You were the director of the Lincoln College Fitness Center as well, right? Yes, sir. Now, that, therein, that, there's the rub right there. You had an ability to affect them on the mat and in the weight room, fully realizing their, their potential. I think that's cool. Yeah, yeah, it was it was really good. I mean, obviously, um, it put me on campus a lot for a lot of hours. You know, I would be there from 6 a.m. until, you know, after practice, and then, I, you know, would have to come back in the evenings for study tables, being that it's a small campus, and, you know, I have things like that set up. So, I mean, I was there, you know, all day, every day, you know, whenever kids needed me, you know, they knew where they could find me. So that was always, always a good thing for them, knowing that, you know, if they had anything going on or they had any questions, they knew exactly where I would be and where to find me at. So, Let me ask you this. Jumping from a, a position as an assistant into a head coaching position, were you aware of all the things that, uh, uh, all the demands that were placed on a head coach or that would be? Um, I feel like I had a pretty good idea going in, um, but there were still things that, you know, little things here and there that, that popped up that I was like, oh, you know, of course I've got to deal with this again, you know. And uh, just small things that would come up that, you know, you didn't realize that the head coach was doing behind the scenes. Um, but overall, I had a pretty good idea because um, Coach Clement kind of groomed me, you know, to be the next man in line. Um, so he, he spent a lot of time, you know, explaining certain things and going through stuff that uh, that obviously helped me out when I did become the head coach. Um so that helped tremendously. Now, you had a pretty decent wrestling career yourself. Uh, it, that doesn't always translate into being a great coach, by the way. In your case, it has. Uh, you were actually in the Indiana Wrestling Hall of Fame. I think you were inducted in, I want to say 2008. Does that sound about right? Uh, yeah, I believe so. So I don't know where you were when, or how old you were when you started wrestling. But uh, perhaps you can take us through your your formative years in the sport. Um, I started wrestling as a uh, wrestling freestyle as a second grader. Um, well, let me move back. In uh, my high school program, had a little program that they did. They called it the Beach Grove Booster Club, and uh, it was normally about two months long, um, from kindergarten through fifth grade. 
Um, you kind of went in, they taught a few moves, you wrestled some lines, you played some games. And like I said, it was only about two months. And I did that in first uh, kindergarten and first grade. Um, my father came to me when I was a second grader and was like, hey, do you want to go wrestle in a wrestling tournament? And I was like, sure, you know, let's go. And so uh, <laughs> we went out and we, we drove to Martinsville, Indiana, which was about an hour from our house and went and wrestled. And I got second in the tournament and uh, kind of just started wrestling every week since then so um so i've been wrestling for you know the, a good portion of my life um and of course my father was was one of my coaches growing up um always just he was a volunteer coach at the high school level um when me and my brothers were in middle school he was just kind of a volunteer coach at the middle school level um just really loves the sport um so that's kind of i think where I, I get my passion from the sport from is from my father um, even today as I coach in college, no matter where we're wrestling at, if he's able to make it, he makes it. Um, you know, two years we wrestled junior college nationals out in Spokane, Washington, and he was there both times. Um, you know, not afraid to drive anywhere to, to watch some wrestling and to support me. So, um, so that's always, always a good thing to have that kind of support. Um, uh, I want to go back to, uh, your your career at Lincoln Lincoln College uh, as a wrestler. You were a JUCO national runner up in two thousand, right? Yes, sir. Okay, and then there was an injury. Can you tell us about your injury? Um, when I I transferred to University of Indianapolis, and uh, I was eligible to compete, and so we were practicing. And you know, one day I I woke up. I think it was a Saturday morning. I woke up and my neck hurt. And I couldn't figure out why, and I just thought, oh, it's just a pulled muscle. Like, you know, it'll be, it'll go away in a few days. And about five or six days later, it was actually worse than it was. So um, I thought, man, there's really something wrong here. And I ended up having two herniated discs in my neck, um, which wasn't so bad. You know, obviously it hurt a little bit. And uh, but then I, you know, I went to a neurologist and things like that. And uh, the, the neurologist was like, well, he's like, it's not going to get any worse. He was like, uh, you know, if you can tolerate the pain, then you, you can wrestle if you want, you know, as long as it, you can tolerate the pain. And I was like, okay. So I went to practice for one day and I broke my wrist. Um, so at that point, that was kind of the, kind of the, the end to it. Um, obviously, it wasn't meant to be at that point in my life. So um, got into starting to help out coaching um, at UND then, and uh, just kind of moved forward with the coaching from there. How tall a guy are you? I'm about 5'6", five, six, five, if six. I'm lucky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I still wouldn't mess with you. <laughs> you got shoulders of alignment, man, I got to tell you. Uh, <laughs> but uh, pretty darn strong. Obviously, you figured out the weight room. Are you still learning um, as far as things, you know, new ways to train and new ways to train your athletes, are you still learning? You're still open, open to education in that nature? Um, yes, absolutely. I'm um, learning all the time. Um, you know, I, I try to read as much as I can, try to get new ideas, things like that. Um, my undergrad is actually in exercise science. So, you know, I had a little bit of a passion there um, with all that. And then, of course, um, my under or my master's degrees in coaching education, which had several courses and some strength and conditioning stuff, things like that. So, um, constantly learning things. Constantly. I was going to say you've been a things. student for a long time, dude. You've been at Lincoln, uh, UND, uh, Ohio University is where you got your master's, and now, of course, uh, the Marion University Knights head coach there. Uh, you've got an opportunity to touch a whole lot of kids here and be positive influence on your on, on their life as they will on yours no doubt um yeah. how do you pick up the athletes you need what what's your uh, what's your invitation like to these kids um you know that, that's the great thing about coaching is that you can always have a have a good influence have a positive influence on their lives um you know constantly trying to push them forward um to be better students better people better wrestlers um, you know, and constantly trying to work on becoming a better person, um, yourself, obviously you can't teach these things to individuals if you, if you're not living that life yourself. Um, so, you know, trying to, to live what you teach and, and preach to these kids is, is hugely important. 
Well, you better be careful. I know Marion University football are the NAI national champions in 2015. Is your uh, your your ultimate goal? I got to believe is to rule the NAI. Yeah, um, obviously got my work cut out for me there, um, especially with Grandview doing what they're doing right now. Um, but yeah, I mean, any coach in my situation, it's it's always going to be, you know, to be the best, you know, and to to try to to work as hard as you can to become the best. Um, you know, nobody's going to give anybody anything. Um, nobody's going to lay down for you. So anything that you're going to get, especially in this sport, you're going to have to earn. Um, so, you know, from, from day one, you know, when they hired me, it's, you know, go out and find the best student athletes I can find. And, you know, from the first practice we're going to have, it's going to be to work to win national titles. Um, you know, and that, that's the ultimate goal for any coach, I think is to, uh, is the, to be the, the pinnacle, to be at the top. So, well, the NAI is lucky to have you. You've got a great, uh, a great university to work for. You're looking to begin uh, wrestling. I think it's this fall. Is that the design? Yes, yes. We will start uh, next fall. Yep. Next fall. Yeah. Well, we're going to be there with you, uh, Grandview University. You bring them up uh, here in about a half hour. Uh, Andrew Long will be uh, traipsing here into the studio to do an interview with us. Uh, it's uh, kind of cool seeing programs like Grandview University who start up from nothing and immediately just have dominated the NEI. It's just what a wonderful story that has been. Yeah. We're looking forward to seeing what you do at Marion University. Well, hopefully I can uh, can do, do as well as what Coach Mitchell's done, that's for sure. So. <laughs> well, Stephen, thank you for the time today. Congratulations to you. Marion University on the Knights. We look forward to seeing the team that you assemble and the ones that will be competing in the years to come. Thanks for the time today, and I hope you enjoyed the Nike hot seat. All right. Thank you so much, and uh, have a good day. Stephen Bradley has been our guest. He's the new head coach of the Marion University Knights in Indianapolis, Indiana. Look for them to begin action a little later on this year. I'm Scott Casper for Takedown. Thanks for watching. <laughs>